Imagine being able to move at 300,000 kilometers per second. Yes, per second. At that speed, you could circle the Earth seven times in less than a second. Sounds absurd, and it is. In modern physics, this is the ultimate speed limit, the speed of light. It's the end point of acceleration, where time and space start behaving in strange ways. Light doesn't need fuel, faces no resistance in a vacuum, and glides through space as if it were on a perfectly open road. It's so fast that imagining anything quicker seems impossible. But as counterintuitive as it may sound, this extraordinary speed is still far too slow. Yes, even light is humbled by the vastness of the universe. This realization completely changes how we see space. What once seemed like a technological challenge becomes a physical abyss. How can something that travels 300,000 kilometers in a single second be considered slow? The answer lies in proportions. When we start truly facing cosmic distances, we realize that even the speed of light crawls like a turtle in the face of the immensity surrounding us. Let's start with our closest neighbor outside the solar system, Proxima Centauri. This star is just 4.2 light years from Earth. Sounds close, right? After all, it's only the nearest one. But even traveling at the speed of light, it would take over four years to get there. Four whole years. No stops, no detours. For comparison, the Apollo mission took only three days to reach the moon. Now, imagine a journey that would last longer than a full college degree, just to reach the nearest star. And that's just outside the solar system. Within it, things already start to get surreal. Sunlight, for instance, takes more than eight minutes to reach Earth. That means everything we see in the solar sky is actually an image nearly 10 minutes delayed. If something catastrophic happened on the sun, we'd only know minutes later. And Mars, our favorite neighbor, can be up to 20 light minutes away depending on its orbital position. Pluto? That one's over five light hours away. All of this just shows that even in our home, the scales are enormous. Now let's zoom out. Let's step out of the backyard and take a look at the galaxy we live in. The Milky Way is about 100,000 light years in diameter. In other words, if you were at one end of the galaxy and sent a beam of light to the other side, it would only arrive in the year 102,025. Now think about how that affects any travel plan. Even if we could reach that incredible speed, we'd still be limited to a tiny fraction of the accessible universe. And it doesn't stop there, because the universe is even bigger than the galaxy we call home. Our closest galactic neighbor is the Andromeda Galaxy. It's 2.5 million light years away. Yes, you read that right. That means a trip there, even at the speed of light, would take 2.5 million years. That's enough time for entire civilizations to be born, evolve, and vanish. That's assuming humanity even survives long enough to tell that story. Andromeda is just one among dozens of galaxies that make up what's known as the Local Group, a kind of cosmic neighborhood with about 80 nearby galaxies. But this group is part of an even larger structure, the Laniakea Supercluster. We're talking about a formation that spans 500 million light years. That's right. If you had started traveling when dinosaurs first appeared and had been moving at the speed of light ever since, you still wouldn't have crossed even half of that territory. And even with all that, we're still within a limited part of the universe, the so-called observable universe. Current estimates suggest it has a diameter of about 93 billion light years. And here's the most shocking part. It's not fixed. The universe is expanding, and this expansion is happening faster than light can travel. That means there are regions we will never be able to see or visit. No matter how far science advances, these areas are moving away from us forever. This revelation is like a cold shower for anyone who believes that someday we'll visit distant galaxies. The speed of light, once the ultimate symbol of progress and velocity, starts to look like a limitation. And here lies the great irony. While we define a limit based on light, the universe keeps growing, silently mocking our hurry. Even if one day we manage to build a spacecraft capable of moving at a significant fraction of light speed, that doesn't mean we've solved the problem. In fact, that would be just the first step into an ocean of even greater challenges, starting with the relativity of time. According to Einstein's theory of relativity, the faster you move, the slower time passes for you compared to a stationary observer. That means that inside a ship traveling near light speed, the crew would live normally, but outside, time would pass at a completely different rate. Imagine a mission to Proxima Centauri aboard a ship reaching near light speeds. For the astronauts, the journey might last only a few years, but upon returning to Earth, they could find a completely transformed planet where decades have passed. This time difference, known as time dilation, turns space travel into a kind of journey to the future except there's no guarantee of returning to the time you left behind. And then comes another nearly insurmountable problem. The energy required to propel a spacecraft at near light speeds. 
to accelerate to just 10% of the speed of light would require an amount of energy equivalent to several years of Earth's total energy production. And the faster you go, the more that requirement increases, exponentially. At some point, to carry just one kilogram of cargo at those speeds, you'd need to consume more energy than the sun emits in a day. And even if we overcame that energy challenge with some revolutionary propulsion source, there would still be the dangers of space. At those speeds, any tiny piece of cosmic dust becomes a lethal projectile. A fragment the size of a grain of sand could pierce the ship as if it were made of paper, releasing energy comparable to an explosion. And that's not to mention cosmic radiation, highly energetic particles, solar storms, and even possible interactions with dark matter, elements we still know very little about. Space may look empty, but it's far from safe. Traveling through it is like driving on a dark road filled with invisible obstacles and no guarantee of survival. Even if the ship were armored with the best materials ever created, there's always the risk of catastrophic failure. Remember, at such extreme speeds, even a minor collision can end the mission and the crew. So when we add it all up, time dilation, absurd energy costs, physical dangers, we realize that the challenge of high-speed travel isn't just technological, it's existential. We're talking about surpassing not only the limits of physics, but also the limits of human nature itself. Even if we had the technology to protect the ship and its occupants, there's still the psychological factor. What would it be like to live for years, maybe decades, in an isolated capsule, with the same crew facing the vast emptiness of space? How would we cope with the distance from everything we know, knowing there's no easy return or chance of rescue? These questions have no simple answers and remind us that exploring the universe isn't just a matter of engineering. It's also an inner journey, one that demands mental resilience possibly greater than physical endurance. Faced with all this, many people wonder, what if we could simply skip those distances, ignore the space between two points, like folding a piece of paper to bring two distant ends together? Science fiction loved this idea and turned it into concepts like the warp drive. Inspired by works like Star Trek, this engine, also known as a warp drive, gained a theoretical version in physics through Miguel Alcubier. According to his model, it wouldn't be the ship itself moving faster than light, but rather the space around it. The idea is to create a distortion bubble. Space in front compresses, the space behind expands, and the ship surfs on that wave. Since the motion occurs within space-time itself, it wouldn't technically break the laws of physics, in theory. But there's a huge obstacle. This kind of propulsion would require a type of matter with negative energy, something we've never observed and don't even know if it can exist. Even if it did, the amount required would be so absurd that perhaps not even the entire universe combined could produce it. On top of that, there's the risk of bubble instability, destructive side effects, and even time paradoxes. Problems that, for now, keep this idea locked within the realm of equations. And if the warp drive seems out of reach, there are even bolder ideas, like wormholes. These theoretical tunnels in space-time could connect distant points in the universe through a shortcut, as if we folded the fabric of the cosmos and created a bridge between two places. A journey that would take millions of light years could, in theory, be completed in an instant. But there's an important detail. All of this remains on paper. Although wormholes are mathematically possible within the equations of general relativity, no one has ever seen one, much less stabilized one for use as a travel route. To keep them open, you'd need an exotic form of negative energy. The same problem as with the warp drive. And if someone actually tried to go through one, the chances of it collapsing instantly would be extremely high. For now, they're nothing more than mathematical hypotheses. Fascinating, but not practical. The impression we're left with is that the universe itself was built with a kind of natural firewall against interstellar travel. As if it were saying, you can look, you can imagine, but getting there? Never. Maybe this limit is temporary, and new discoveries in physics will one day change everything. We've seen that happen before. 200 years ago, no one believed humans could fly, split the atom, or send a probe beyond Pluto. And yet here we are. Science is an eternal hunter of the impossible. But until that happens, we need to face reality with our feet on the ground, or better yet, on Earth. The speed of light, that absolute symbol of swiftness and possibility, turns out to be insufficient in the face of the cosmic vastness. And that might sound frustrating, but it's also deeply inspiring. Because it's precisely that limit that fuels our curiosity. The fact that we can't reach everything makes us want to understand more. Even if we never set foot in another galaxy, the simple act of looking at it through a telescope, studying its light that traveled millions of years to reach us, is already a kind of achievement. 
Every new theory, every probe sent, every question we ask the sky, all of it makes us travelers, even without leaving the ground. And maybe that's the true meaning of exploring the universe. It's not just about physically getting there. It's about expanding the mind, questioning our own limits, and gazing into the infinite with the same curiosity as a child staring into the unknown. The universe may be too vast, too hostile, too slow for our impatient dreams, but that's exactly why it remains the greatest of mysteries and the most irresistible. And as long as we keep looking at the sky and asking, what if, we are, in some way, already part of the journey. Leave a like, subscribe, share with your curious friends and comment below. If it were possible, how far would you want to travel in the cosmos?